Now, before you start calling out favoritism regarding Alex Albon, let me remind you about something that Nico Hulkenberg recently said. And don't worry, I'm not going to be talking about Oliver Behrman today. According to the Haas driver, the smaller teams in F1 will have to rely on unorthodox tactics to try and score a point. In the case of Haas, it was basically creating a train which resulted in Nico Hulkenberg scoring the first point for Haas this season, and meaning now that Haas are currently sixth place in the championship which is still kind of wild. Williams are going through an unorthodox situation of their own, with Logan Sargent being benched in favour of Alex Albon, his car, Logan's, being given to Alex, that means he can run the remainder of the Australian Grand Prix weekend. And the dog piling has already begun, people saying that Logan Sargent is not fit to be in Formula 1. But I respectfully disagree with that, and here's why. For starters, the piece that Hulkenberg headed was all about the teams having to offset themselves from the top teams, and going against the grain since, quite validly, those top 10 slots are already taken. That is provided the top 5 teams bring their cars home and there's no DNS or mistakes, and then all of the lower teams are going to be going, QUICK! WE NEED TO SCORE POINTS! UH! DO SOMETHING! UH! HULKENBERG! SHOUT BOO! AT YUKI Tsunoda. THAT MIGHT MAKE HIM FALL OFF THE TRACK OR SOMETHING! In the case of Williams right now, they were caught between a rock and a hard place. Alex bins the car around Turn 6 and Turn 7 of Albert Park, which is exactly the same place he binned the car last year when that car was in a big points paying position. He was in sixth place and that would have been the best result for Williams had the results still stood. Of course, we got the red flag and then he might have fallen down the order, but at that point he was going for eight points and that would have definitely guaranteed Williams being seventh with no sort of squeaky bum time with Alpha Tari catching them up. But yeah, Alex bins it, costing roughly, according to the Destructors Championship estimates, about half a million dollars worth of damage, which wouldn't surprise me would be a similar amount to what the damage was done to the car this time around. Again, at the same corner. But let's be fair, a lot of the other drivers in different categories were having trouble at that corner. I remember watching F2 qualifying and F3 practice. They were having some problems there too, cars spinning off. Now, normally for a typical F1 team, this wouldn't be a problem. They would look at what damage Alex had done to the car, realize the chassis's written off, and you'd just be going, oh, okay, looks like we're going to have to change the chassis. Lads, lads, you got a chassis down there? No? No? Oh. Um... Uh... And lastly, it was going to go one of two ways. First off, you can try and fix the chassis that Alex broke, try and do some sort of bodge job ready for free practice three the next day because they didn't make it out for FP2. Or what they have seemingly decided to have done is basically just write off Alex's car completely, send it off back to Grove to try and repair it in a bit longer time or just scrap it entirely, and then give Logan's car to Alex. That means he can run it for the remainder of the weekend, which means that Logan Sargent's now basically going to be doing nothing for the rest of the weekend. He flew 20 hours in an easterly direction, the jet lag would have been horrendous. All the while, your car is being taken apart and Frankenstein into Alex's car and see what parts of his car can be salvaged, which according to Alex, isn't all that much. Logan's side of the garage is now empty, save for the rear end and gearbox, and Albon's side of the garage is hard at work fusing together a working car. Cue the firestorm online for people saying either Williams are denying Logan a chance to show off what he's been able to do over the winter. They prefer Alex over Logan. And that is sort of emboldened by the fact that if you go back to the free practice one times before Alex binned it, the times that Alex and Logan were posting were not all that dissimilar. There was less than a tenth in it. So then that means people are just saying, oh, the team no longer have faith in Logan Sargent and therefore they're giving the team leader the only car. Yes, I do understand what people are saying in that regard. Last year, Alex scored all but one of the points that Williams were able to accrue last year. And that was a very major point in them gaining $30 million extra in prize money. And yes, Alex got the version of the W45 with the upgraded parts throughout the entire season, whereas Logan spent most of the season with the base spec FW45 simply for the fact that he kept crashing all the time, which resulted in him costing the team several million dollars in damage. Yes, those things are fact and they cannot be ignored and they should be acknowledged. But Logan Sargent has made a lot of progress and the reason why they even kept him on board is because James Vowell saw the data and he liked what he saw. But put simply, the reason why this happened is simply down to two important factors. The cost cap and Williams' comprehensive overhaul. Which also has something to do with the cost cap. Ba basically, in this case, the cost cap is a bad thing. 
Yes, I know you don't want to hear this, but in reality, the cost cap is a double-edged sword. Sure, it's meant that the teams are no longer going bankrupt every Thursday and a brand new team comes in and then they go bankrupt the following Thursday. And it's actually meant that the teams that are currently in Formula One are no longer losing money ham over fist, but they're also turning a modest profit. But what we've seen right now, with Logan's car being given over to Alex Albon's, is the downside of the cost cap when your team is going through a major overhaul and reconstruction of the overall package in the way they design cars, which has not really changed all that much since 2003, roughly. Some of you probably weren't even born. In turn means that in some cases, making parts for your car is a little bit difficult. And things are really, really tight at Williams to the point where they were resorting to Excel spreadsheets to keep a catalog of 20,000 car parts, which of course, there's nothing wrong with an Excel spreadsheet. My wife can attest to that. But in the circumstances of running a Formula One team where you go down to the real small minutiae, Maybe you shouldn't be relying on something like that. As a result, Williams were left on the back foot when it came to racing itself and they were playing catch up. And in fact, I believe that whilst I was watching free practice too, I heard some banter amongst the Sky Sports commentators that Williams were even contemplating the idea of bringing last year's car to the first few races of 2024, so that means they could fully develop the FW46, and therefore we might not have seen the teething troubles that we saw in Bahrain, where basically the steering wheel went completely awry. But no, they were just about, through the skin of their teeth, get the car on track with two working chassis and only two working chassis. Remember here, my friend, the chassis or the monocoque is the core component of the car. You cannot skimp on that thing. You cannot do a rush job on it because that's the thing that protects the driver in an accident. And if that is badly damaged in an accident that Alex Albon caused in Melbourne, then you really don't want to make a bodge job on it or just make a hasty repair and hoping that it's not going to break again. Because supposing if it did break again, if Alex Albon went out there with some kind of cut and shut job, which meant that he could race and then Logan could race as well, in the middle of a race, throughout about an hour and a half of racing, there might be a little bit of an issue where they start to see that the chassis is about to fail. And then it does fail, which results in the car disintegrating at roughly 180 miles an hour down the back straight, which is that windy bit. And Alex goes hypothetically into the barriers and then results in either him at best just retiring from the race or at worst being injured. Does Williams really want that on their conscience? Probably not. And I can't see Williams going gung ho and just trying to rush in a job. That means he can get into FP2, do some long runs and then just hope for the best. I don't see that happening. They took the safer decision, the more rational decision. Williams had to take a hard long look at themselves. Look at the bigger picture. Hulkenberg's comments ringing true. The team has to make unorthodox decisions in trying to score some points. This was a really difficult decision for them to make, as James Val says in his statement, the main one. Ahem. We are hugely disappointed that the damage sustained to the chassis has meant we need to withdraw it from the weekend. It's unacceptable in modern day Formula 1 not to have a spare chassis, but it is a reflection of how behind we were in the winter period and an illustration of why we need to go through significant change in order to get ourselves in a better position for the future. That's important there by the way. As a result, we've had some very difficult decisions to make this afternoon. While Logan should not have to suffer from a mistake that he did not make, every race counts when the midfield is tighter than ever. So we made the call based on our best potential to score points this weekend. The decision was not made lightly, and we cannot thank Logan enough for his graceful acceptance, demonstrating his dedication to the team. Again, that's important there. He is a true team player. This will prove a tough weekend for Williams, and this situation is not one that we will put ourselves in again. Basically, what that statement is saying is that Williams are taking the short-term pain in return for some long-term gains. And as Alex Albon said throughout Jeddah, he felt that the car had more potential, that there is more scope for improvement instead of Williams just sticking to the tradition of being a straight line demon and then just hoping for the best in the corners, trying to remember what downforce is. These kind of changes that Williams are doing are not taking place overnight. This is going to be a very painful time for them where they will take any single point that they can get. What Vals is doing is that he is taking a leaf out of Ross Braun's book in just thinking, okay, forget about the short term. It's going to take some long-term thinking and implementation to truly see some consistent results where you're not going to have a fluke season and then completely fall off again. What Williams needs to try and do is get itself back up to the top of the midfield and even get itself into a position where it can think about podiums realistically. But surely you've got to understand this is not a situation that Williams wanted to find itself in. Can you really imagine Williams wanting a driver to crash? So that means one driver can be favored over another? 
uh, unless you're Andrea Moda, of course, go and watch Joss's video about that. It's a really, really riveting one. The point is, though, is that Williams were hoping that neither driver would have a shunt so bad that it would write off the chassis, that maybe they could try and ride this risky ride all the way through to maybe Miami, or better yet, the first European race in Imola, when they can easily get a chassis over and they might have actually been able to build a spare, or better yet, build an upgraded version based on the data they've been able to collect. That ideally, if they could survive those first five or six races, would have been absolutely gravy. Williams took a risk and it didn't pay off on this occasion. And this was an absolutely necessary risk they needed to take to make sure they even had two working FW46s. And as a result, they are being crucified online. I do get why though. The American audience of Formula One who have recently found themselves watching the sport are seeing an American driver, Logan Sargent, someone that they are inherently backing to some sort of extent, depending on who you are. And then they see him being sidelined through no fault of his own, him being relatively close in performance to Alex in FP1, and then Alex being favoured. People are going to be vocalising their disappointment to Williams and thinking that they are playing unfair for Logan. They might assume that Williams have absolutely no interest in furthering Logan Sargent's F1 career. But look, let's just look at the bigger picture. I need to go back to those Hulkenberg comments again. If there was a situation where the bottom five teams weren't so desperate to get points, I could have easily seen a situation that Williams might have taken a look at this and just gone, OK, Alex, you had your chance. Logan, we're all counting on you to try and score us some points or at least get a decent performance. And then Alex would have just been left to dwell on his mistake and then hopefully not make the same mistake again when we go to the next race at Suzuka. But Williams can't do that right now because they're in the middle of a very important transformation for their long term future. And of course, they didn't have the money to make a spare chassis, not to mention they've been masquerading as a more modern team whilst also operating in the dark ages. Williams need to score points, as do every single team on the grid, and considering they were very close to scoring in Jeddah, they might have done so had Magnussen not decided to rename himself Kevin the Tank Engine. They need to consolidate their current 7th place in the Constructors based on the fact that Albon scored an 11th place in Jeddah. And considering that Alex Albon scored a 9th place in 2022 through a last minute pit stop where he went on to sobs and it was an absolutely remarkable situation which saw him dye his hair red. And going back to last year, before his shunt, he was looking at P6. Out of the two, he was the more likely one to get the job done ahead of the likes of Racing Bulls and Haas and potentially maybe scoring two or maybe four points like Hulkenberg did last year in the midst of the chaos. He got a P7, which for Haas last year was basically half the points they scored in one go. Logan has commented on this too, and he didn't hide his disappointment. Of course he would be disappointed. It would be very weird if he wasn't, but at the same time, he fully understood the bigger picture and where Williams is right now. He's probably well aware of the sacrifices and changes the team is undergoing. So I don't think he's going to be going down the train of thought that the team didn't believe in him. They didn't have the spare chassis to give to Alex, and they didn't want to run the risk of doing a hatchet job on the current chassis, and then potentially run the risk of injuring or harming or ending the race of Alex Albon when he might have been in a really good position, then the chassis gives way, and therefore he has to bring it into the pits and retire. That would have been even more galling. Also, with Logan going along with this in the way that he has, this is going to further embolden his case for staying at Williams. Having a team player on board in the midst of a renovation, and something that Williams has been needing for a very long time, is crucial. Williams needs team players. It's all very well and good if you're fast, but if you're a jerk about it, then that's not really going to endear you to the people at Grove who are just looking for drivers who are no nonsense, get the bigger picture, want to help the mechanics, and therefore means the team do better because that can make a very big difference between the team going all out to make sure that your car is ready to go for a session, or they might decide to go, oh, uh, yeah, about that. Logan is being smart here. He is being a diplomat, and this will not be forgotten by either Vowles or Albon. How will this manifest itself? I do not know. But this is the right thing for Logan to do. It's not fair. Of course, life isn't fair. Formula One isn't fair. But Logan being the bigger man here and being a good sport, will pay dividends later on. This might be the thing that saves his Formula One career. Now, if this had been the likes of Mercedes or Ferrari or even the likes of Aston Martin playing fast and loose with chassis considering their resources and funds, then this probably would have been seen with less understanding and probably very vocal resistance. Can you imagine, say, if Charles Leclerc broke his chassis in the middle of FP1, they didn't have a spare, therefore they told Carlos to get out of his car and give it to Charles? No. 
Carlos, especially right now, would have been very resistant to it and probably would have just been going on the blower saying, no, you are not having my chassis, Charles damaged it, why do I have to suffer for it? I think pretty much the majority of the grid would have said the same thing. Logan though, probably would understand that Williams cannot simply do this, that really they need to score points, get an advantage, try and counter Haas's Jeddah situation. That strategy was very, very surprising throughout many of the other teams, and therefore Williams is thinking, right, we need to do something similar. Because even now, Williams has changed so much in the space of 12 months, I think it's quite realistic for any Williams fans to safely assume that they are not the last place team anymore. They are now solidly in the midfield, where points are fairly realistic on almost every single race weekend. I mean, Jeddah, 11th place, and people didn't really expect it. Alex was just there. What we've seen in Melbourne was just a very brutal side effect of all of that, but at least they're doing something. They are making the most of Dorothan Capital's money, as well as the extra prize money that they were able to accrue, simply for the fact that Alex Albon was a machine in defending. And that straight line speed, that was a really nice swan song to give that last little gift to the Grove team. Right now, they'll be seen as the bad guys who allowed Alex to get away with breaking his car and getting to race whilst Logan has to sit on the sidelines. Yes, I know you're going to say that Logan had his own spin in FP2, but he didn't hit anything. So before you call Logan unfit for Formula 1 or James Vowles as the demon for not letting Logan race, just consider this. Williams simply can't afford it. And they also can't afford to sacrifice points. Sure, Logan might have had an absolute whirlwind of a race and scored several points. That is entirely possible. Again, in FP1, the times weren't all that much different, so we might have seen a major upset. But Alex is just the surefire bet. And right now, Williams had to make that difficult decision. It's not fair. It's not ideal. But in this situation, nothing is ideal. And I'm sure that Alex is aware that Logan's going to get a lot of heat for this, as well as his team in general. So... He's now going to be even more determined to score points, so that means Logan's sacrifice wasn't in vain. But this is clearly a downside of the cost cap, because if teams are making major overhauls to the way they structure things in their workflows, it does lead to compromises when it comes to building spare parts for the car. Normally, a team doesn't have a crash like Albon's, and their chassis usually live to fight another day. But in this case, it simply didn't. And that is usually galling for any F1 team. No mechanic alive wants to go through a major rebuild in the middle of a race weekend. It's bad enough just getting it prepared for the race weekend itself. Lady Luck was simply not on Alex and Williams' side. So just step back and relax. Nothing nefarious is going on here. Logan Sargent's seat is safe for the moment. It's not because they've lost faith in him. It's simply for the fact that they really needed to do this for the greater good. And trust me, I would have been really disappointed if James Val stuck to his guns, was loyal to a fault and said, no, Logan should get a chance to do it and therefore sacrifice a chance to score points. Yes, Logan might have done the deed and done really well, but Alex is a surefire hit in a point where all the teams have to be desperate and think outside the box. Box, box, box. So Williams are successfully trying to get themselves out of a rut, whilst Alpine has found itself in one. I think they're a major embarrassment to Formula One right now. To find out why I think that, you can go and watch this video right now as to why Ryan Reynolds and Deadpool have probably backed the wrong horse.